Hello everyone, my name is Alex and some of you I already know, some of you I saw just a couple of days ago, some of you a bit earlier. And today I am going to speak about business service monitoring and use cases that we've got for them. But before we'll actually continue to that, let's make a quick refresher to see what they are all about. So, of course, and probably a lot of you know that picture, the idea is that we have services. We have services that we provide. We provide them, of course, to our customers. Uh, maybe we, again, just provide, you know, a service internally. But in any way, we have a services, and they are based on something. They are based on hardware. They are based on software. And there is always something that we forget about, something uh, on all uh, those services are based on. So maybe something, a piece of software that, again, was maintained for a lot, a lot of years. And what is business service monitoring? It is, of course, a possibility. A possibility to monitor your business, to see uh, what exactly is going on with your business, depending on what exactly is going on with your infrastructure. So, uh, of course, Again, usually it is important, quite important, to monitor the infrastructure itself. But for most of the people who are not admins, understanding what does it mean that, let's say, a piece of hardware broke or uh, is not available is not really clear. So a server is broke, what does that mean? I don't know, my business is working or not. So, and they, of course, want to know, is it working or not? And using business service monitoring, we can uh, specifically see what exactly affects our business. So we can calculate SLAs, we can calculate SLOs. Again, what we basically achieve currently, do we meet uh, the objectives that we set for ourselves? And then we can, of course, share the knowledge. We can share the knowledge between, again, uh, maybe our own colleagues and maybe between our customers. So. Let's take again a reminder on how those services look like and what those are. So we do have a service tree. You know, we have a business. It is based on something. Uh, maybe we, again, uh, sell ice cream. Then we, of course, have an ice cream truck that we might monitor. And if it breaks, probably we won't be able to do that. Or maybe we have something a bit more advanced, which, uh, again, has a lot of different equipment. And this equipment, of course, is monitored. And uh, again, there's a lot of equipment. So we can see uh, in this example that we have the user services. They are based, again, on uh, some web portal, help desk, maybe the phones. And phones, of course, also need to be plugged in into the something. So they are plugged in into the PBX, and PBX is plugged in into the switch. Or uh, again, maybe we have containers, maybe we have CRMs, and so on, so on, a lot of different things. And of course, we usually do monitor them. But again, we are interested in the business perspective. And to see that business perspective, we need to go to the services. We need to go to the service configuration. And again, see that pretty uh, basic yet efficient menu where we can specifically create services. And yeah, there's a lot of word services. But again, all is near. All is easy to understand. So we configure the tree. We can configure uh, the actions. So what Zabbix will do in case something will happen with the services. We, of course, specify the SLA. So what we expect to actually achieve. And do some SLA reports to see did we achieve it or maybe not so much and now we need to apologize to our customers or maybe to ourselves even. And the first thing of course, again, is the basic service view. Well, most of you definitely know we can see it or we can edit it. And of course, depending on the situation, depending on what happens, service view is not you know, always constantly looking the same. If we have problems, we see them in the service view. Again, uh, we can see what exactly is affected. And uh, again, we can even see immediately which host is also affected by the problem. And we do that not only by, again, defining which service is connected to which event, but also by defining, again, some specific identifiers for the services the ones that are called tag, specifically service tags. And in, well, with the help of those service tags, we can again separate them to understand which service relates to what, what it affects, and uh, to make it easier for us to build a report, or again, uh, to maybe 
do some actions in case a service is affected. And not only actions, but permissions too, so we can define who can see what. And of course the reports themselves. So we can again define how things should be calculated, how, uh, again, what will be our objective. Do we again want to achieve those 99, 8%, maybe want to achieve 100%, uh, will our business work 24 seven, or again on some specific schedule. Again, all of that, most of the time you, or most of you already know. What's interesting is the actual use cases. So how do we, or other Zabbix users, actually use that. So we have a couple of real business examples. So why, uh, again, examples, why real business examples are better than just, you know, uh, trying to immediately from the scratch figure out by yourself? Because, again, you maybe have a similar business. And you need that starting point. When you have that starting point, it's, of course, always faster to understand what you need, do you need something similar, can you build something similar, and just in you know, a couple of moments, build your own business service monitoring. And that also gives us, again, better understanding what can we achieve and we, what can we use to, again, make our business service monitoring precise. So the first example will be the one that looks a bit convoluted. So uh, this is, um, again, an actual financial institution. Of course, I cannot say the names. And as you can see, they have a lot. And all of that is interconnected. So when you try to build, you know, just a graphical bus uh, business tree, it may look a bit hard to understand. So this is connected to this. Emails, of course, are also related to customer services since they need to communicate with the customers. And also, uh, of course, uh, emails will be used internally, so they are connected to the internal services. And again, it's hard to track what exactly is connected to what. And sometimes, you know, there is even an additional level. So an example in Zabbix, we will have some additional hardware and uh, software that we need to monitor. And basically, again, clicking, imagine that you would click on any of those, you would see some additional uh, layer of hardware. But we don't want that. We want a simple business tree, and they wanted a simple business tree. So, of course, it was built. So uh, the first thing, was to define what is the business. So, and they defined that it is, of course, a financial institution. And, and it has this small number 15 right there. So what exactly those 15 are? And those 15 are, again, the services that they actually have, the services that they use, again, maybe internally, or maybe providing to their customers. And uh, we immediately can see that they are quite easy uh, easily divided, what exactly is what. So we have accounting is based on something, we see that customer services include something, and so on. So we, they were divided into smaller categories, so they can find them a lot easier without trying to you know, understand what exactly and where it is. Because by a single click, they immediately see what exactly each service is based on, and also, of course, see the actual SLA. And the best part of it, since uh, just as we saw, all of their services, you know, were intervened, uh, judging by the tree, this was uh, a child service of this, this was based on this, this was based on something else, and in the tree, it just, you know, a lot of lines, hard to understand. But in Zabbix, you can make, again, uh, child services, and child services can be parents for their own child services. And they can be interconnected meaning that whatever service will be affected, you will see immediately uh, which parent services it also affects. So uh, like in this example, we can see that we have accounting, we have Microsoft uh, services, and all of them are, of course, in the internal services themselves. Uh, <clears throat> and again, if uh, we will see that maybe Microsoft services will stop working, we will know that accounting will be affected, the internal services will be affected, and we will see the exact chain events, as do they, uh, of what exactly went wrong in their organization. So they will be able to fix this. And of course, different services hit differently, so different services, uh, some of them are more important, some of them are less important, because again, they have smaller impact, bigger impact. And uh, in this case, we see, again, on a bit of a smaller scale, but how they define what exactly is. 
So, of course, they define if, you know, uh, a small amount of percentage of their services is affected, that probably is a warning, needs attention, but it doesn't have to be immediately a critical problem. But an example, if, uh, again, two most critical services will be affected, that will be immediately a disaster, and they set a wait for it. And an example, the Internet Bank, and you can imagine that any bank now has um, specifically an internet bank, and if it falls, you know, all the customers will be affected. Probably it will be in the news. So, of course, they want to see immediately, and they will, that, well, it's a disaster, and they will react faster, and not just like seeing, hmm, this service is down. I wonder, what did we have installed on it? Uh, nobody remembers. But in the services, they immediately will see that, well, our internet bank is down, probably need to inform the customers. And, of course, they uh, need to know, do they provide the services as they need to be provided? Are the services always available? How often is that always? So they use, again, reports for that, which we can create in the report section. And in this case, of course, they have a lot of different reports. So for accounting, to know if, you know, uh, we always buy licenses, in their case, they buy licenses in time, is an example. The software which is used by accounting is always available, so they can uh, provide their customers with any, again, financial reports that need it, and so on, and so on. And all of this can be in quite, I would say, a simple form. A simple form, yet efficient form, where they can see, again, by uh, weeks, years, or days, how it was today, was the service provided as expected today. Or again, of course, a dashboard can be built. A dashboard can be built, which will contain the reports, which will contain the actual uh, values, what is up based on the specific service, what is not, and well, what is the overall situation during the, again, days, months, and years for them. So they can plan ahead. They can, again, buy new software, buy new licenses, buy new equipment, and always be ahead, again, of whatever might happen with their quite sensitive environment. And permissions also can be different. As you know, when something breaks, uh, usually the first, first people to know is maybe some internal support team uh, because, well, they already know, they already try to fix, but they still get those calls. Uh, they get updates like, what is going on? Why is this not working? And then, of course, they need to also reply, and then they need to explain, and then they need to fix at the same time. So you can, uh, and they do provide, again, uh, their accounting and management with views, with specific views limited by permissions they actually need, they actually are interested in, to make sure, again, they will see only what is easy for them to understand and immediately, again, uh, make a decision what should be done next if needed. Not to just get calls, not to just waste, waste time explaining what is going on, just to show for them what exactly is going on. And, uh, of course, users will see the most important information. So they will log in, they will log in, they will have just a couple of buttons because now, again, you can limit what users see and the management will be able just to, you know, make this click and see what is going on. No need to try to understand what exactly this configuration means. Do I need to go to the configuration? No, you don't. You just go, again, to the services and you see what's going on with your services and so do they. And, of course, again, uh, not always management is watching on the dashboard. I know quite management, some managements do, but, again, they don't have to, since you can, again, notify them about the state of the services. So you can notify accounting uh, based on, again, the licenses, which you monitor through the services. Did they expire or not? Um, again, you can notify administrator on the shift when something internal is broken, so uh, this administrator can check it. And, again, everything in their environment is separated so everyone gets informed about what they should and see what they want to see and not just everything around. And another example, a managed service provider example. This is actually uh, used pretty frequently and this is one uh, that is easier to see even in this view. So as you can see everything is pretty simple. Uh, it's a hosting company. They do have customers. Customers use services. And uh, there are some internal services which can be used also by the customers and internally, like an example, Zabbix itself. So this is also, again, uh, I think quite frequently used uh, by the Zabbix users who actually use the services. And it's really, really 
uh, easy to build. So we can see we have the main service, which is in this case hosting. It is divided in just customers, ser uh, hosting services uh, they provide, and the monitoring itself, because in this case, customers also get access to the Zabbix. So they can go into the Zabbix and check, like, is actually uh, the service I buy works as I expect? So they can easily log in and see exactly that. And we can see uh, each customer, again, is separately named. Of course, those are not real names, as you can guess. And they will be able to log in and see what exactly is going on. Of course, depending on what is actually going on, uh, <clears throat> they have also differently uh, assigned which service is more important. And in this case, not services, but the customers. And of course, all customers are equal, all customers are important, and all customers deserve a proper service. So of course, they, again, define that each customer will wait equally. And as soon as basically, again, any customer has a problem, it will be a high severity, and they will immediately see who this customer is, and they will be able to assist them. And of course, if you have you know, a bigger installation, this is a, a small rebuild of the actual installation. So uh, if you have hundreds of customers, probably you won't go to the weights and you still want to you know, simplify things. You can use the percentage, and uh, in their case, they do. So we can just specify which, again, amount of customers, in example, should have problems to understand. Is it something individual, so only this customer is affected, or is it something global and everyone now is, again, everything is down and it's basically a panic attack and we need to fix everything immediately. And as I said, each customer can be informed individually, and this is the same case. So we can quite simply just, again, by properly naming the services, define that uh, Genevieve should have access only to her services, right? So she will log in and she will immediately see what exactly is going on. So what services does she even buy? What does she pays for and is it provided? And that's, again, exactly what's happening in this situation. So they can log in and they can see maybe, again, their VM is not reachable and uh, probably call the provider and say, uh, do you know about this, guys? And of course, they will say, we do, and we already fix. And not only the service view. So each uh, customer does have their own dashboards where they can see, again, what they buy and how are they using that. So that, uh, in the case of the hosting, they can, uh, in example, monitor the traffic going through their VMs. Uh, overall usage of resources, statuses, and of course the SLA reports to understand, uh, do, uh, do we, or the hosting company in this case, meet uh, whatever terms they defined in the agreement? So it's clear and everybody understands what is going on and is it working as expected. And of course, still everyone gets notified, so each customer will be notified separately about their own problems uh, related to their own services that are provided by this specific hosting company. So again, monitoring infrastructure is great, we all should do that, but we shouldn't forget about the business monitoring. So we should monitor it from both perspectives. And if possible, I think it's always a good idea to again provide this view uh, as an MSP to the customers of your own. So they can see what do they have and they can always see that we meet the standards we define for ourselves. And of course, there will maybe not uh, a lot of visualization shown specifically for the services, but we do constantly improve them and they again will become more visual with time. Thank you.